Hello and welcome to 20 questions and this time for 20 questions we turn the roles around. This time it is me who can ask 20 questions to Edwina Tops Alexander. Edwina, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, you've been grilling all of your guests. Are you ready for, to be grilled with my questions? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. Okay, let's kick off. Maybe obvious. Which horse has had the most impact on your career? Well, of course, Ito, the Chateau. But I have to say Piolotta because she was one that first started my career. So I think Piolotta is, you know, a horse that really got me onto that level, um, you know, when I was at the World Championships. But obviously, you know, I didn't have her as long in my career as unfortunately as I did with Ito. But Ito is um, definitely, for sure, the horse that I won the most on. Could you compare the two, Ito and Piolotta? Were they similar? Were they different? Um, very fast, um, very adjustable, very careful. Um, Pia Lotta maybe had a little bit more options and maybe easier scope than Ito, but um, I think Ito had a better mind at the end. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> good to hear. Um, second question, of all the shows on the circuit, what is your favorite Launching Global Champions Tour show? Falcon's Fight. Falcon's Fight. <laughs> Definitely have to say Falcon's Fight. I mean, it's not to be biased, but it's, I guess, the epicenter of where the Global Tour started. Mm -hmm. and. I think, you know, because we have um, permanent facilities and it's made, everything's made around the horses and for the tour. Um, and I think, you know, the facilities are unbelievable for the spectators, for the horses, for the grooms. So I think it's um, quite an obvious one for me to say. <laughs> and for this episode of 20 Questions, we have the spider yeah. in the background. We are in Valkeswaard. What is the one thing you can't go to a show without? Uh, my horses. <laughs> we've heard cell phones, we've heard uh, <laughs> gloves, helmets, but horses. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I would have to say um, my pillow. Your pillow? Yeah. Because you never know what pillow you're going to get when you get to the hotel. So then you're guaranteed to have the best pillow. You always bring your own pillow? Yeah, always. Always? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hard, soft, medium? Uh, it's a tempura. And it squashes up in the bag, so it's perfect. <laughs> that's, that's good to keep in mind. Um, if you could compete with any horse, past or present, which one would it be? Um, I probably would say Balabe. Yeah, I just, you know, that horse was so competitive and um, so many options and so much scope. And I mean, he won a lot um, and um, a lot of blood. I, I don't know if I would ride it very well, but I would love to be able to ride yeah. that horse. And it's really my type of horse. Um, I mean, Hicks said, I think, uh, amazing horse. I don't know how easy that one would be to ride. Um, and of course, Explosion, amazing horse. Yeah. But I also don't know if it's a horse I could ride. But um, uh, I, I'm not totally sure if I could ride Balabay either. But I would love to be able to ride Give a horse. Give it a go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which rider style do you admire the most? Uh, female, I would have to say Penelope. Yeah, I think she's got a great style. And she's, um, you know, very well connected with the horse and um, she for me rides pretty much in the horse than yeah. I would get say a lot of the French riders maybe don't they ride a lot different I think and she's got very good dressage skills so female rider I would say Penelope male rider I would say Marco Kutcher and Marco Semi. Ooh. <laughs> um, but coming back to Penelope mm. um, you're extremely fit you're in great condition you, you work out a lot uh, as does Penelope you think that's also a little bit why you, why you look up to her style uh, no, I think, um, I mean, she looks great yeah. on the horse, but no, I think, um, she's, you know, she's very, um, she's got a horse as well ridden, you know, yeah. and she, she really sits into the horse a lot and she, I think she has good, good dressage basics on her horses and she's got a great position and, uh, and of course being a female, you know. <laughs> um, always a good question to ask. What is the best moment in your sporting career? Ah, uh, the best moment, I'm going to have to say two, can't answer one. Best moment, one of the best moments would have been when I won the first Grand Prix, five-star Grand Prix with Pia Lotta here, 2005. <laughs> um, and I would have to say Prague. Winning the Super Grand Prix. Yeah. yeah. Pia Lotta, 2005, the year before the Global Tour started. Yes. Again. Why you choose Valkes Fart as your favorite show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you could choose to be any rider, past or present, for a season of the tour, a full season, who would it be and why? Um, I'd have to say Ben Ma, because, I mean, he just, 
he just is unbeatable with this horse, you know, when he's in form and the horse is, you know, it's an amazing combination. And at the end of the day, everything is about combinations, I think. And so you never know what's going to happen. Um, but if I could just get straight into his shoes, his boots and get on that horse and go, I mean, it just looks amazing. You know, what, what he can produce. I mean, that horse, you know, can take out distances, but it doesn't look like he's taking out distances and still be fast and take his time on the fence. And I mean, yeah, as we've all seen, he's unbeatable with this horse. So um, I would like to. Yeah. Do you think there have been many combinations like him? We've, we've seen many good combinations, yeah. but the combination Ben Mara and Explosion is something really exceptional. Yeah, look, everyone has, not everyone, but people are fortunate to have lucky moments and lucky horses that fit them and uh, in their career. And I mean, you've, we've seen many riders, for example, Rodrigo with Palabe, um, uh, Hickstead and uh, Eric, uh, Meredith and Shutterfly and I mean I know I'm forgetting many of them and there's thousands more um, Jan with Top Gun so um, I think there's so many combinations and I think a lot of <clears throat> a lot of winning is about m having the right combination with a horse because I I think there's a lot of amazing horses that maybe haven't found the right rider or, um, or, or vice versa so I think that's really uh, I think that's maybe you know the reason why i had a lot of success with ito was because it was just a great fit yeah. you know so i think that's the most important thing and um it's very hard to compare yourself and put yourself in someone else's shoes but um you know it's his moment and and um so he's the one to pick yeah, fantastic. <laughs> um if you could re-jump one round which would it be which round would it be uh probably arkin in 2009 when I was second because um, I slipped two times and I think that's why I lost <laughs> Otherwise you would be so I'd like wall. to go back and fix the ground <laughs> and <laughs> or put some more studs in yeah. and not slip and try to be faster yeah. but I also have to say um, in 2008 with Ito for the top 10 because it was the night before the Grand Prix. I won the Grand Prix, and the night before that was uh, the top 10, and I had a time fault. So I finished second, and Michelle Robert won, and I still don't forget hearing about that today. <laughs> <laughs> People still remind you. <laughs> yeah, well, Jan does, and I think that's why I won the next day the Grand Prix. So, um, but still, it was a great day, but, uh, and I was also second in the top 10 in Geneva with Ito, so, um, but um, yeah. No time faults, that's not good. No, that's definitely not, allowed. not Definitely not the horse's fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, what advice would you give a young rider? Uh, I would say probably the same as what everyone else has said. Um, just to try to learn from everybody and get as much experience as possible. Keep your eyes open. Watch as much as you can in the paddock um, and be prepared to learn from everybody and, and um, try to get experience in different stables and I mean you can never stop learning and like Margie said you can you know mm. never stop learning which is true um, and that's the best thing about our sport because the horses keep you humble but um, you know I think to be open-minded and to to have a, a very open vision and to uh, and to try to uh, expand your experience as much as possible and I think once you've you know found all those different techniques from people and tips and everything try to form your own formula and try to make it work make it work <laughs> yeah. um if we would ask this question to the other riders they probably answer with your name but to you who is the toughest rider to face in a jump off um i think it's very nice you said that about me i would never have said that and i don't think many people would but i um, i probably have to say julian epiard mm. yeah pretty yeah. fast yeah yeah. In our um, the replays of the of the Grand Prix that we're showing on uh, on the website, Epiar comes uh, comes through time and time again. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received, and who gave it to you? I would have to say, um, I mean, just to keep your feet on the ground and uh, never forget, you know, where you came from. Always stay humble um, and always believe that, you know, everything is possible. I mean, within limits, but yeah. I think the mind has so much strength uh, as to how much you can achieve in life, whether it's with riding or it's with another career that you have. And I, I really think the mind is so strong. And I think that um, really believing in what you think and, and really trying to put your mind to that and visualize it can um, 
get you a long way. Um, talking about careers, if you weren't a show jumper, what would you be doing now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, um, I always wanted to be involved in fashion, fashion designing, but I couldn't draw. <laughs> and at that time, you had to draw. Yeah. So um, that would be something that I would love to be involved in, um, fashion design or interior design. Okay. Yeah. Any influences here in, uh, in this beautiful VIP lounge? <laughs> a little world? bit, yeah, okay. a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you miss the most about living in Australia? I would say to be surrounded by my family. You know, I mean, it's for sure the best country in the world to live. <laughs> Everybody knows this. <laughs> and um, the people are the nicest people. Uh, no, um, and of course, you know, it's just so far away and with my family there and um, I guess it would, wouldn't really matter where they were just to be with my family. Um, that's the hardest part. But um, of course, the weather's amazing and um, you don't really have cold winters, you know, not really winters. But Australia's so big, so it depends where you live, you know, yeah. but, um, but uh, yeah, family. Do your, do your, does your family come over often? Do you see them? They often? come generally once a year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you could have three people round for dinner, past or present, who would you invite? Who would you have? Um, I would have probably my grandparents. So I'd have to have four. Yeah, that's Sorry no problem. We that. fix it. And Jan also, because mm -hmm. he would need to be there. And I'd like to have Jimmy Fallon, because I think he's really funny. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hilarious. He's hilarious, yeah. yeah. So he's good fun. But um, yeah, it'd be hard to pick three people. Yeah. That sounds like a good group. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is a good question. I can't wait to hear your answer. The top three things on your bucket list. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd have to say to sleep in till at least 10 o'clock one morning because I've never achieved that in my life. Really? Uh, yeah, not even, maybe nine, maybe once, but just to try to sleep in in the morning yeah. would be one. Um, I would like to rekindle my piano playing skills because... Um, I learned to play the piano. My mum sent me to all these lessons and at the time I didn't really enjoy it, but I, I had to work pretty hard at um, playing the piano and um, I need some, you know, brushing up skills on that to, to keep it going because I actually do enjoy it. I'm, I'm not great at it. I ha it's one of those things that my mum can just pick up the, a piece of piano and just play it like yeah, reading yeah. a book. Yeah. I actually have to really study it hard. That's actually why I stopped it, but I'd like to be able to. <laughs> That's when I knew I was not very good yeah. at it, um, but I can play it a little bit, but I'd like to refresh that for sure. And um, I think I'd like to um, try to learn French. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I've, I just always think that um, I should speak that language and uh, especially living in Monaco and um, Chloe probably going to school there and, you know, I understand a bit, but um, people don't understand me, so it's pretty hard <laughs> to yeah. speak it. Um, but I don't know when I'm going to have time to do that. I really expected at least one of three to be bungee jumping, oh, rafting. So, no no it's, way. it's sleeping in, it's playing the piano and yeah. studying French. Yeah. It's not really exciting, is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, if you hear me play the piano, it might be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question, next question. Ooh, what's the one thing people don't know about you? Probably, um, I don't know, I'm pretty down to earth, you know, I, think, I don't know if people know that, I might know that by now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, you know now. <laughs> Describe yourself in three words and down to earth, that's three words, so that, that doesn't work, different words. Uh, well, does it have to be a sentence? No, three no. separate words. Okay, three separate words. I would say loyal, mm. I would say um, determined, and I would say very reliable. Oh, hmm. those are, that's, that's, that's a humble and nice in the same sentence. <laughs> Sounds really good, really good. <laughs> this is a nice one. What's the most important thing that your daughter has taught you? Uh, well, a lot of things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll sleeping start is with still not enough. Yes, sleeping <laughs> is still something that uh, is a question mark. No, I'd have to say um, patience because I'm not really a patient person. Mm -hmm. So to stay patient and count to 10 and keep my cool, um, yeah, that's what she's taught me. But also to just enjoy life in a very simple way and, um, you know, just to be able to spend time doing other things and enjoy doing simple things.
if you could switch lives with anyone for a day, who would it be? And we've had Jimmy Fallon, so it's not him. No, not Jimmy I'm Fallon. I'm not an option either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to say the same as Margie. She said Jeannie. Jeannie in the bottle. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, because then you just click your fingers and anything can happen. Change the world, improve the world. Um, but unfortunately, that does not exist. So... Mm. For one day, maybe Adele. I'd like to sing like Adele. Ooh. Yeah. And play the piano. And play the piano. I could do everything at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, last question already. Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? I don't know. Yes. Yeah? That's difficult. I don't know. I, you know, I don't think I see myself going every week on the show. That's where I don't see myself. But doing what at the moment, I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'd like to get a few more Olympics under my belt and mm -hmm. then I'd like to go from there and mm, I don't know. Ask me in 10 years. Medal? <laughs> Medal, sure. Medal, yeah. <laughs> Those were the 20 questions and that was Edwina Tops Alexander. Edwina, thank you very much for sitting down with us. I know you've got a busy, busy schedule that it is very um, unusual to keep you pinned down for so long, <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for doing thank so. Thank you. And Thanks. thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>